it appears that many, if not most of these attacks were allegedly carried out n not by white supremacists, not by the alt-right, uh, but by, by people of color. What's your response when members of the Orthodox community say that there would be more of an outrage if the attackers were white supremacists and thus fell more easily into a political narrative. It was something beyond um, merely uh, an African-American, right? It wasn't representative of that community. Happy New Year, everyone. It's hard to believe because as a kid, I was sure that we would have moon bases and hoverboards by now. Instead, we have unlimited genders and drag queen story time. Great. That's way better. Yesterday, I uploaded a video about Mayor de Blasio dishonestly blaming white supremacy and Trump for the most recent anti-Semitic attack in New York. He wasn't alone with many Democrats and their media doing the exact same thing. Despite this attack being only the most recent in a long series of attacks perpetrated by African Americans. This is the typical tactic when real life goes against the media's political narratives. Attacks on Jews by black people doesn't advance their political goals, so they have to either ignore the story or spin it. Imagine my utter astonishment when Jake Tapper on CNN actually calls out the Anti-Defamation League's vice president on this very double standard. It appears that many, if not most of these attacks, not by white supremacists, not by the alt-right, uh, but by, by people of color, that there would be more of an outrage if the attackers were white supremacists and thus fell more easily into a political narrative. I mean, you know, I think, again, this is where investigations, not only to bring those perpetrators to justice who are carrying out these incidents, but to identify their motivations. Right. In Jersey City, it was something beyond um, merely uh, an African-American. Right. It wasn't representative of that community. It was somebody who subscribed to a real anti-Semitic ideology because it starts at an early age for people to have an understanding and then to be allies for each other. And so I don't think we need to overstep and try to overanalyze what this means, but we have to get the data and we have to understand the motivations before we jump to conclusions. Did any of you follow that? Especially the first part. Clearly, he doesn't want to answer the question because the answer is clearly political. The ADL is a left-wing political organization and they're used to using anti-Semitism and racism as a weapon against their political opposition on the right. No doubt their assumption is that if you're on the right, you're likely white and hate Jewish people. That's precisely why all the attacks on Jewish people by black people has gone largely ignored up to this point. It simply goes against the narrative and perceived political alliances. That's why he refers to black people as allies, common intersectionality rhetoric that you hear from the far left. Unless you're with them politically, as a white right winger, they perceive you as the enemy. If you are white and one of their allies, they expect you to shut up and do whatever they say. My job is to listen and be a voice. And my my job is to shut other white people down when they want to interrupt. <laughs> My job is to shut other white people down when they want to say, oh no, I'm not prejudiced. Now is what he said completely wrong? No. This attack isn't representative of black people. It's a tiny fringe of violent cosplay idiots who have enjoyed protection from the media because of their skin color. The problem is we don't hear any of this when a white person attacks a minority community. They spend days or weeks fear mongering about white supremacy and link it to the political views of their political opposition. They also use it as a pretext to censor their political opposition on social media. What they don't do is try to calm people down and insist that it's not representative of whites or right-leaning people. When I went to Jersey City the day after that attack, there was not a single flower or a single condolence card. It was all I could do to get people to say that they were sorry for what had happened. In certain cases, uh, when the person is wearing a MAGA hat or when they can be connected to the alt-right, that's sort of a clean case, right? It's someone who we all, people of conscience, see as a villain. What happens when the person who's an attacker is someone that we, or in ways, when I say we, I mean we people of conscience, see as someone who themselves is part of a victimized group. It seems then that a lot of people don't know how to make sense of that. You can't make sense of this because you're indoctrinated with political beliefs that are not accurate. Like when she says people of good conscience recognize people in MAGA hats as villains. It really just shows the utter lack of self-awareness some of these people have. The problem that she's describing here is a direct result of it. She follows that up by saying that people of good conscience see black 
black people as a victimized group that needs protection. That's the thing. You see every group that's not white as a victimized group. Therefore, setting up the scenario where only whites can be the villains. That's why nobody pays attention when anti-Semitic black nationalists start killing Jewish people. It's almost as if leftists have been programmed to the point that they literally cannot acknowledge anything negative from a quote, victimized group. Oh, the irony of singling out a group of people based on their skin color and casting them as the villains. We'll get right back to this media meltdown, but first let me take a quick moment to thank this episode's sponsor, PatrioticLegacy.com. PatrioticLegacy.com was nice enough to send me over one of these units so I could give you an honest review. I love this tactical flashlight. It's got everything you would ever need. Six overall lighting functions, escape features like the window hammer and the seatbelt cutter, solar charging so you don't don't need batteries, a power bank for charging your phone and other devices, and a removable compass with access to a personal safety alarm. Patriot Legacy supports veterans and YouTubers like yours truly, so head on over there and make sure to use the promo code DRONE20 to get 20% off your purchase. Thank you. We've seen this same neurosis when it comes to Muslim terrorist attacks in the US. The media censors and spins to deflect blame from Islam. Now that we have the name, the key questions are what? Well, first of all, John, I, don't, you know, I know that, uh, that what the name sounds like, but we don't know that it's a Muslim name. Or how about when black people target white people for racist attacks? You never hear about it because the media buries those stories to avoid directing negative attention to these victimized groups. Dr. Thomas Sowell, an African-American economist and scholar, wrote a piece on this very issue saying, quote, when two white newspaper reporters from the Virginian pilot were driving through Norfolk and were set upon and beaten by a mob of young blacks, beaten so badly that they had to take a week off from work, that might sound like news that should have been reported, at least by their own newspaper, but it wasn't. It may be understandable that some people want to head off such a catastrophe, that being blowback on the black community, either by not reporting the attacks in this race war or by not identifying the race of those attacking or by insisting that the attacks were not racially motivated, even when the attackers themselves voice anti-white invective as they laugh at their bleeding victims. Yeah, I think that one of the challenges we have is that we keep wanting to use anti-Semitism or racism as a cudgel against our political opposites. This is CNN? Is this not what I and many others have been saying now for years? That's a Vox reporter on CNN admitting that they use racist and anti-Semitic attacks as a weapon against their political opposition. One of the challenges we face is that, you know, anti-Semitism is a bipartisan issue. It is an all-partisan issue. It is not a issue that is just connected to one particular racial group. What the f***? It's almost like they've been trying to keep a lid on these anti-Semitic attacks by black nationalists, but it's just risen to the level that they can't ignore it anymore. Thus, they have to admit what's been going on to avoid the appearance of being complete political hacks. I'm gonna go ahead and end on that because there's really nothing left to say. While it's good to hear some truth for once, it's only really being done to cover their own asses and no doubt they'll be up to their old tricks as usual soon enough. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. If you wanna support this channel, you can do so by subscribing to me on Patreon, Subscribestar, or just sending a donation on PayPal. You can find all the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.